6.30, and so I will call to order the uh, August 28th meeting of the Select Board. And we'll start out by uh, reviewing minutes of meetings past. I don't like to uh, So, August 14th, that was just the two of us, Mike, yep. and uh, Corey sent them late. I did read them mm -hmm. and have no particular questions. There was a spelling error here and there. But are you good with that? Yeah, All right, like consensus, we're good with that, um, Salome. Mm -hmm. And then last week's August 28th. Mm. Today's August 28th. Today's the 28th. Uh, August 21st. Mm. August 21st. Good catch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I I you haven't read them? No. All right, shall we table those? If you want. Yeah, we'll, sure. we'll table them. Okay. Keep those. All right. Uh, community input. I see some community members here. Um, Al, you were here early on. Is there something you'd like to address the board yeah. about? You just either. Bob, Bob was here before. Will you? Oh, the community input department has. Okay. <coughs> I assume this is a proof new procedure. Yeah. Just get, get you closer so we can, you know, there you go. hear people, see people better. Okay, I'm here. Uh, I almost representing the conservation commission. As you know, uh, we've been doing an invasive species uh, thing in scout land and on the Turcotte property. Uh, well, just to kind of bring up the speed, uh, last spring we had a, a boy scout from Berwick named Luke Conroy approached us and he wanted to do an eagle scout project. And uh, he wanted to know if he could help on this invasive species thing. So he met with us a couple of times and we felt that yeah, this would be great. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> what it boils down to, he uh, he had run it by me. He had this was his application right here. It's called the Eagle Scout Service Project, and it's called the removal of invasive plants from the cons in a conservation area. So, anyways, what we found out, he submitted this, and they refused it because Who, it, who's they? Uh, Boulder, whatever council or something, the Boy oh, Scout. So he, this he, is Boy Scout. he submitted it to the Boy Scout Council. Yes, yes. Got and they, they, they said that they needed permission from the, uh, the town selectmen. So what I'm here to do is hopefully that uh, I'm going to have you, uh, and I've actually prepared this in anticipation that you probably would have a big problem with it, uh, to maybe have a, a vote tonight to allow him to complete his Eagle Self Service project and remove invasive plants from the Scout Land Conservation Land Zone by the town of Lawrenceville. So I've actually made up a... Who determines the nature of invasive species and what kind of... I mean, what, what, what will it look like to residents if they walk through uh, Scotland, I guess? They're probably not even going to see it, uh, other than the fact that a lot of these things are just pulled out and just put on the ground. Because it, and, you know... Is it like bittersweet? I mean, what it... Yeah, like the... I, I don't... I'm, I'm no expert on this. Uh, there's something of... Thorn something. Can, yeah, I know, but there, there's several. Can I see his proposal, please? I don't really too much on that. Actually, you guys have a copy of that, so we don't know what's happening. And it really doesn't tie in on a lot of more, more boilerplate than anything. <coughs> So we're one of several places where he's doing this, correct? Oh uh, no, this is one one project. This is an Eagle Scout project. This is for him to get an Eagle Scout uh, badge or whatever you get for this. Oh, I see. And uh, he uh, basically is, uh, you know, got to put this in together. And the thing of it is, the reason I came right down, I, I just got notice last Friday that they didn't approve this because of not having, you know, you guys signed <coughs> off on it. And. Uh, this stuff really has to start towards the end of September, and, you know, in the, the first of October, because the plants, I guess other plants start leaving, the, losing their leaves, and these will hold them longer, so it actually is it's an identifier for the different species. And, you know, he's a bush, I mean, he didn't freeze. I mean, he, no, is, he is, pull, I, it's, it's right here. Mm -hmm. uh, this service project is going to be the removal of two invasive plant species at a conservation area in Rollinsford, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. Park Hunts, Colorado, blah, blah, blah. They are... Bittersweet, mm -hmm. uh, and it gives its Latin name, and buckthorn. Buckthorn is the other one. Yes. And not being, uh, I know, I well know bittersweet. Uh, I'm just going to turn to something you might know a little bit more. Is buckthorn, Salmi buckthorn, is that? I remember he just pointed it out when we walked through the woods, and it's just shrubby. Yeah. 
And, and just to, to let you know, our uh, Charlie Marino, our forester, he's going to work with this. And hopefully, what we're hoping to happen, and we haven't had a meeting all summer, but in September we're going to have a meeting of the Conservation Commission. What we're hoping to do is have Charlie have like a, hopefully a Saturday or a Sunday, that we can have members of the Conservation Commission and members of any, anyone in town could probably go to this meeting and, and learn a little bit more about what we did that, that last mm. time, a little bit more about the invasive species. And you know, when people are walking out there, you know, you, you see one of these things, you just yank it up and you know, toss it. And uh, so basically, uh, you know, that's what it amounts to, and uh, it's going to be a little bit extra help for us. And we had planned on doing it anyway, like I said, this fall. We, we missed last fall. Last fall, we concentrated on getting the edges of the turfot field cleaned up, mm -hmm. and we did that. And uh, this year, we're hoping to uh, we kind of go in that with a uh, one like a mower to kind of keep it keep it clean. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was to, to do one of these plant yeah. removal things. I didn't read it carefully, but there's some of our little budget, and there's 150 dollars. There's no money. It's not going to cost us anything. Okay. What what whatever he's going to spend in there is going to be. Either his money, the troops' money, or whatever. Okay. Well, I think we should, one of us should at least read it just to make sure that there isn't anything. Are you able to do that, Mike? I mean, I did it quickly. Yeah, it's pretty. Tonight we're going to make a nice sign post to the yeah. 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 discussing uh, the consequences and dangers of some of the invasive species to the native species. Mm -hmm. they, they did one up in uh, Woods Run many years ago. And there's a they trail did, out they there. Did what? I'm sorry. They did. Uh, an Eagle Scout did a project up there, and he put a little kiosk up there, and there's a trail you can walk out into the, uh, the marshes. I, I've never been in there myself, but uh, you can walk out into the marshes, and I did a bench out there. You can sit. I think the people from Woodrow are maybe yeah. familiar yeah. with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are two benches. Yeah. And, put, and they put a sign up, a kiosk with a sign you know, explaining what was out there and mm -hmm. wetlands and so on and so forth. So oh, that's part good. of this project. We'll to receive donations and fundraise for the materials that will be needed to uh, complete uh, the sign post and all that. That's nice. Um, part of the project will also be recruiting members of this troop and other yep. young people from this school to um, volunteer in the project. This is the point of the project. You might want to point. You didn't have fancy. Uh, Forms like this one, I did this. I had to figure it all out on your own. It's nice. Time's changed, Michael. I spent 30 years. <laughs> yeah, it's the oh, it's 20. I myself too much. This is terrific. Yeah, I would move that the town would accept the proposal from Mr. Conroy to uh, conduct his Eagle Scout project. Can you see it? It's a little Conroy. <laughs> like I say, I, I made out a, uh, a sample. Uh, like I say, just anticipating and the fact that this is getting real close. I want to get this in the mail later tomorrow, hopefully. We've done this, and not with the scouts, but um, with Mr. Marino to, to remove these invasive species. Mm -hmm. right? Or did we go yeah. with um, yeah, we, we, this did Charlie do it? Or, um, we actually had some, 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 some people from Stratford County Jail mm -hmm. okay. working with us a, a couple of years yeah. ago. It's an ongoing. Oh, yeah, yeah it's it's you, can't, so. you totally can't get rid of these yeah. things. No. No. So it's an ongoing thing every yeah. year. You have to go in and just get a few more out. That's great. All right, so I have a motion and a second. I'm just going to read the little paragraph. On Monday, August 28th, at the select board meeting, the board voted to allow Luke Conroy from Berwick, Maine, to complete an Eagle Scout service project. The proposal is to remove invasive plants in the Scout land conservation land that is owned by the town of Brownsford. I'm going to just add per his proposal, just so that it's really clear this is what we're accepting. Okay, any other discussions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 There you go. Thank him very much on our behalf, please. Okay. And when, it, when does he plan to do it? When? Uh, like I say, this is really at the Charlie Marino. Uh, there is a window, whereas uh, it's usually in, in October. Yeah. Uh, I, possibly the end of September, but, but usually right in that. Will know, we hear something back from him or from you or? Uh, 
It might be nice for him to just come and see us. We could yeah, thank him. Yeah. Yeah, it would be a nice, that. nice thing. You can yeah. suggest that to him. Would be like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, suggest that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Definitely. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. I thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Any other comments? comments? Questions? Okay. We just came to hear the avatar presentation. We are asking how avatar is coming at seven o'clock this evening. We are talking. Oh, yeah. It's our yeah. conversation. With I'm in two with all of us. All right. All right. All right. So we will plow through our agenda. So I think it must be department head. So I'm not even going to look. Just all right. Okay. Figure that out. Okay. In regard to the grant that we received from Homeland Security to update our emergency operations plan. In the amount of four thousand dollars, I have a contract here and a purchase order for Harvard Consulting. She's the one who did it uh, for us the last couple of times. Um, so I'm proposing uh, purchase number one two two five for the amount of four thousand dollars made up to Harvard Consulting, and this will come out of the Homeland Security FEMA reimbursement account. Two two five to Hubbard Consulting to update the local emergency operations plan for four thousand dollars. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> and this is the contract uh, between the town of Ronaldswood and Hubbard Consulting. Just in case, uh, you know, anywhere between uh, four and five meetings, what the tasks are, uh, what the budget is for a total of four thousand dollars, which is a, which is a hundred percent match from uh, Home Security. Our match is the in-kind services from those participants who who attend the meetings. Mm -hmm. So does Hubbard Consulting, is, is this largely what they do? Yes. Is, the, is emergency operation plans? Yes. that she's going to be doing the quarterly and final reports. So, blessing. <laughs> Would anyone else like to read this contract? Well, who's reading? I'm going to be sending you an email with a set of policy, it's really guidelines on issuing local permits on Class 6 roads. We would like your feedback on and uh, fire chief's feedback. Mm -hmm. So I'll do it like probably first thing tomorrow. Ready for a motion? <laughs> motion to, to approve a contract between Sound and Rollinsford and Jane Hubbard of Hubbard Consulting LLC. Um, for the town of Rollinsford reads contract with Jane Hubbard Consulting LLC um, to update the town's emergency operations plan at EOP. Scope and fee schedule are outlined in this contract for a total of four thousand dollars. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye.
several months ago, uh, we had mentioned to the board that you know, with this carfentanil issue and whatnot, that we were researching what the first responders needed to wear mm -hmm. in the event they came across this powder and whatnot. After speaking with the folks at the uh, Dover Fire, York Ambulance in the hospital, I determined that we needed some, uh, what they call, 9-100 masks. Some Tyvek suits and some goggles. So we've actually ordered all that stuff. We'll have them in the cruisers um, by this Friday. And uh, they're, you know, they're all one-time use with the exception of uh, the glasses, the, uh, the Tyvek suit, uh, the gloves, and the, uh, the mask for all one-time use. So it was actually uh, a fairly inexpensive uh, thing to put together. So I think it's going to cost them $75 to do that. So. So now we have a little added protection if we come across the scene of a car accident yeah, or, absolutely. or whatever. And we suspect that yeah. uh, there might be some of this dust inside there. Well, that's How it's a car or a bra or something, whatever the case might be. Yeah, I guess so. so. It's a sad commentary on our times, I think. Yeah. 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 We need to keep our public safety officials <laughs> safe. Uh, and the last thing that I have on, on my agenda, I see you have it on tonight's agenda, uh, agenda as well, is the uh, old highway to Huntsville removal. I have not heard from the gentleman that was interested. Did, did somebody call You seem to be the only contact. Okay. So. Did you email him or call him? Because I have a cell phone number. I and that's know. how I swap with him. Yeah. Okay. So, and he hasn't responded. So, um, ask you to reach out if he's still interested because he had his his gentleman come out and look at it so then I'm not sure if he was still interested or not because we haven't heard anything back so all right <laughs> we'll need some kind of contract I think yeah. uh, we'd ask Caroline to see if she could find one online so just some quick template that we can use sure so if you wanted to check in with her I, I don't know if she was yeah. successful sure and we're still planning going out uh, now that the road agent uh, situation is up and on, um, you know, we're still planning hopefully either the first or second week of October as well to start demoing what we can um, on that property. You know, the old toilet and some wood and sandbags that are left there so that in the event that something, uh, you know, something does happen someday, then it's less uh, to worry about that. Part. Yeah. Unfortunately, so. you know, the board, you know, with Jody's help, cleaned out those vehicles over the last couple of years. But there's still a lot of stuff. Apparently, there's still stuff. Like all the fuses that just no longer exist. I see. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> my dad. Christmas oh, decorations. Crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. General purpose. Exactly. General purpose. There you go. So. Um, <coughs> well, that's all I have to have for you. Anything else for me? Um, I got your email about the contract. Norm. I, I get your email back, yes. Yeah, Norm is um, happy. i got to discuss it with the board as well. But um, the board will, will also give you his phone number as well, and I will email that to you as well. Yeah. Well, so, I've got a cell phone number for Yeah, but apparently at night he doesn't always hear the cell, so. Uh, okay. So, and the wife has agreed to it. So. <laughs> All right, very good. So I will email that to you as soon as I get back home. Yeah. It's on the night of the day. All right, Curry. Right. Um, you're talking about? Um, you're talking about? 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 you are You know, when you've got that sound, we'll, we'll go on. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. All right, Chad. We don't, we don't have to wait till 7. Oh, nice. You're next if you want to come up and chat. Yeah, good time, okay. Chad Roberge. Yes. Avatar. Oh, just ducky. <laughs> just ducky. I have relatives in Houston, and I'm worried up to here. Oh, but, that's not fun. No, it's not fun. Maybe it's not fun for them, but no. Mother Nature is just a, not, not, not anything to trifle with. No, that is not.
But let's go on to the topic at hand. And you know, we have um, we asked you here because we heard uh, before the interview process, whatever you call that process that you did. Uh, the preliminary hearing. The preliminary hearing. Yeah. Before you did that, we heard from a couple of Woodlands residents. And then after the hearings, we heard, I guess it was just last week, from uh, probably uh, probably 12 households represented, and Herb Ueto, who I think is president of the association, gave a, a data analysis, which I forwarded to you, mm -hmm. you in the hopes that you would be able to help us understand, respond. <coughs> so that's why we and asked he had, you to He had given it to me too. He came in for a preliminary hearing, okay. so he gave me everything as well. All right. All right. Yep. So, I guess, is there, you did also indicate that you were going back and reviewing some properties. Yes, so we had, um, the preliminary hearings went really well. We had a lot of good feedback uh, from, I think, like the whole town was represented. There wasn't just one area that was right. coming in. Um, and most of the concerns we heard were land values. Um, that was throughout the whole town, and that was really primarily what went up the most for uh, residents was the land. Um, so most of them were coming in just asking, you know, where did the value come from? Once we showed them the sales, they were um, pretty happy with that, and also letting them know that it wasn't just them that went up. You know, we did a we did a townwide revaluation, and on average, it went up twenty percent. So most people, once they heard that, they were they were understanding of the changes. Um, we did have a few issues. Uh, I won't say issues. We did we were made aware of mistakes we had made. Um, one of them being in the Woodlands. Uh, is it, is it, is it just called Woodlands? Because there's River it, Road down there too. It, it's. Um, I think the development is called Woodlands or the okay. association, but it's. It's my understanding is River Road was run, and is there another? Is there another? No, I think those are the only two. Okay. Um, we had some sales when we were looking at the sales for doing the revaluation. We kind of had. We normally we kind of look at the history of sales going back. Even though we only go back two years, we sometimes look at what the history of sales are for a neighborhood, um, just to make sure that we're not like completely out of the ballpark. Uh, the problem with doing the reval in Romsford this time around was that you, you're, the change in the market has been really quick. Uh, partly because the market's coming Jeff, back. It, not just us, I mean in the surroundings. In the surrounding towns and everything, but also you're dealing with being in a different school district with that, which I think really boosted that even further past the Dover ports and the summer mm -hmm. north areas. Um, so we, knowing that, we kind of had blinders on to the sales previous because those weren't really going to help us because you guys are almost eight to ten percent higher than what you were in 15. So looking at any sales in 15 wasn't going to help 16, 17 sales. Um, but we were made aware of two sales that happened in um, Woodlands that were very close to our cutoff. So our cutoff date was October 1st of 15 coming forward. Um, there was a sale in September and another one in June. Um, they were vastly different than what we had them uh, assessed for as preliminary. Um, so that kind of piqued our interest, and then uh, and that was before we met with Mr. Ayuda. Ueda. 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 But we had people come in. But we had people come in that were just in the, uh, the that neighborhood that told us of those sales and whatnot. And then when he came in, he gave us some more information and um, kind of helped figure out where the issue was. Um, we had upped the land value in that neighborhood quite a bit. Because um, we had that one sale where we were looking at, you know, this is how we're developing building values and this is how we're developing land values. Um, once we took out the building value from that sale price, what we really had left was, was just a land value. There's really nothing else in that neighborhood that um, would attribute value to that sale. Um, so, Without looking at those other sales, we said, all right, well, this is how we're going to grade a building. This is the land value. And we kind of gave that land value to everyone in the neighborhood. Um, the problem with that was is that I think after going back and really looking at that sale, we probably should have attributed more of that sale amount to the building. Um, the structure is one of the more higher quality constructed homes in that neighborhood. And I don't think we were accounting for that enough. I think we gave it a little bit. but. Mm -hmm. When you really look at all the things that that home has, um, the quality of construction, the curb staircase, there's just some things that we we probably should have given more of the value to the building. Um, once we do that, uh, we were able to lower the neighborhood value, which is how you 
which is part of the, how you calculate the land value. Um, once we did that, it kind of brought down, it resolved our issues, because part of the issue was we had our higher end homes looked okay. Even though the, the land value was higher than it should have been in that neighborhood, the higher end quality construction homes looked okay when we looked at the sales in the past. The problem is, uh, when we first come in there, there's some really well constructed capes, but they're not the same uh, interior finishes that these other homes are at. Um, we were too high on those. Um, so once we lowered the land values for the whole neighborhood and then looked at the buildings themselves as higher quality construction compared to the rest of the town and the neighborhood, um, that kind of resolved the issues we were having. Uh, even when we look back at some of the older sales. Um, it resolved the issues. We were with, we, with how the assessments were being derived in the neighborhood. So the problem we were having is we had we had the you know the 350 to 450 just under 500 range homes being assessed closer to 550 600, um, which was in line with kind of the higher end homes, and it really shouldn't have been because um, they're just the general case. I mean they're they're well constructed, um, but they're not at the same quality level as the colonials that have the crown molding in every room, the way it's going in. Now the property owners, I mean, you're, you're, I appreciate you're coming here and giving us you know, the information that you, you gleaned or that you thought through. Uh, the, so the, you will be making, or have made, you'll be making, at what, what stage is Avatar in with regard to making changes to? So we've made the changes for... Um, and do the property owners know yet? That's no, not yet. So the way it's going to work is we, um, we're going to go through all the hearing sheets for the, from the preliminary hearing, um, every single one of them, and we'll make decisions on what we're going to be changing. And um, in uh, the case of Woodlands, it's a neighborhood change. So even though maybe 40% of the neighborhood came in, everyone's going to be receiving that change. Everyone probably would receive a notice. I say probably because I have to check with, if values go down, if you didn't come in for a hearing, you more than likely won't send out a notice of change. Um, oh, it's only if the value of your property goes up after we send out that preliminary notice, we send a new notice. Um, but the people that came in to discuss their assessment um, for a hearing, they will get a new notice. And I indicated that to anyone that came in from the preliminary hearing. If there's any change in the property at all, they will receive a final notice saying, this is, this is your new value coming. I don't know what the that? board thinks, but it, I think it would be helpful to send everyone in that. It, we can do that. That's yeah, okay. it would just for PR because even though people didn't show up, may not have shown up, sometimes people were on vacation. I think clearly the association is concerned and it represents the, the yep. neighborhood. So I, I think it would be a good idea to send, yeah, no, send that letter. Yep. Um, so yeah, the, the, the process will be, we usually will send out those letters fairly soon. We just want to go through and make sure we're, we don't have any other larger than one property changes. Mm -hmm. um, we did have some homeowners from uh, Cottage Lane come in express some concerns. Um, there, that was another name. There's only five I have to say this, there. where is Cottage Lane? It's off of Silver. Or no, I'm sorry, General John Silver. Oh, okay. Um, it's it's extension of Silver Lane. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah I guess uh, you can say that. It, does, it is right across. It kind of curves around. There's only five homes back there. Um, one of the homes, it was a similar situation to what's going on on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. it sold for more than the homes in that neighborhood have sold for in the past. Um, so we're going to take another look at that, make sure it's not another, that would be a only a five year mm -hmm. change, but just make sure it's not another um, kind of global issue mm -hmm. for that neighborhood. Um, but most of all the other things were very small. It was, you know, we have more wetness than I think you were giving us credit for, or um, we had a few people that had finished basements that wanted us to come in and sh see that they didn't have a finished basement in reality. And that was um, easy enough to... Those were easy, yeah, we had some good... And then we met some people who just came in to see how the process worked. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, overall, it went really well. So, Chad, uh, if <clears throat> when do you think the letters will go out? It's tough. I gotta get into the office to make sure we go through everything. Uh, I'm hoping. I was letting everyone know that at, at best, I would say early September, and then That's at worst, mid September. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping to get in Friday and then go on the weekend and finish everything up and. Yeah. No, not so, but I did let everyone know it would be beginning to mid-September. Okay. You know, the, the hip bone's connected to the whatever bone. So we can't do the MS1 until we have your final values, and that 
that we need to do the MS-1 in order to kick off the whole tax rate Correct. process. Because the assessed, your assessed value is just one piece of it. Mm -hmm. You know, the tax rate is the other piece. Yeah. And then, you know, we can't, we're not going to be able to do that. So, so now, just so, because I know there's some words from people here who are listening. So if, when folks get their letter, you know, they could look at this and they say, okay, I, I get this, this is fine, wonderful. Or they could get this, they say, you know, I still don't agree with this. At that point, what is their, what is the option that a homeowner has? Uh, they would have to wait for their second bill, come to December, and then file for an abatement. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll take another look at everything and see if we mm -hmm. miss something. Yeah. You know? uh, hopefully not. Uh, we do, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but all abatements after a revaluation are at no cost to the town because we, obviously, if it's something that we did as a mistake, it shouldn't be on the town um, for recovering those. So those, that's something we always do because it's, it's to further promote that we're trying to do a good job. It's the year after the year of? The year? Yeah, it's the year after. So any abatements that come as a result of this revaluation are there are no cost to the town. It's, it's, I don't say free, but it's essentially free. So in other words, the amount of money that we have to put aside to cover them is, co I'm not sure I understand. You still have the same amount of CA days. That, that's how it's kind of used, uh, contract assessing days. Mm -hmm. That normally we, that would cover abatements, but you can use that to for other services instead I see. of abatements. Okay, that's what you're, okay. Right. I think you guys have like eight or nine days of contract days that we use for New construction, mm -hmm. um, debatements normally, that sort of thing. Other questions or comments from the board? Question about <clears throat> the, that, the Woodlands neighborhood in particular being listed as waterfront or is it water access? How is that? Yeah, so the, they're an association, so every property in that neighborhood has uh, interest in land that has the tennis court on it, mm -hmm. as well as water access. Um, that, those rights are valued as a, a feature item. So mm -hmm. the, on every card you'll see a Woodlands Association of Woodlands feature, and that's for $5,000. Okay. Um, and that's for the That's for the tennis court and the, the water, because they have water access. Water access, right. So every, okay. um, most of the properties on, I shouldn't say most of the properties, the properties that are on Riverfront on River Road mm -hmm. have a separate landline item okay. for having water front. Okay. Um, so everyone in there would have at very least water access. So not everyone in the neighborhood obviously is being assessed for water front, it's just water access. Water right. access, correct. Right. Okay. Um, and we, we changed the landline, so it used to just say 1F res for their land uh, descriptions. Mm -hmm. Uh, we changed it because in, in reality what, they all what, have. What does that mean? Uh, it's a single family home, is what it meant. Um, the reason we changed it this year uh, is because it's just easier to track. So if we want to look at all water access properties in town, we want those to come up. Because in reality they do have, I mean, it's not the best access, but they are considered water access. So if you were to list them on MLS, they would say, you know, they have deeded water access. Uh, so we just changed the land description to further our accuracy when it comes to to um, categorizing the properties. Um, changing that land description didn't actually change the land value, it just changes the description of the property. I, I have a question about Marshwood, mm -hmm. and I, I want to see if I'm understanding this correctly. So, so overall, um, uh, land housing property sales have increased in, in the seacoast areas, yep. shall we say. Yep. But I think I heard you say that based on sales that have been taking place in this town, not necessarily just the Woodlands, but just yep. generally sales taking place in this town, that perhaps the sales denote something else in place, something else going on, because we're you're seeing a bigger increase. And Correct. You, and that's what you're ascribing possibly to the decision to go to Marshwood. Is that... I, yes, is that what I heard? Yes, of? that's pretty much. That's the only thing I can see because before you guys, before 2015, it was a pretty steady, you know, three, four percent increase a year. Um, once that change happened, it seemed to jump to eight or nine, um, and and it's not. It not only was it not falling with the 
what was happening previously in 2015, so it's not really following what the neighboring towns are doing. Um, so it, my knowing that that was really the only thing that's changed, um, other than the select board in town, um, that I was... I don't think it's <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah, uh, that I really think that was what was kind of driving it. Yeah. Um, I think school districts play a huge role. Yeah. And uh, you, see, you see it in the listings. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, it's listings, um, and also I had a realtor who come in and said that usually it was a deal breaker. They had a sale lined up, but once the, the prospects found out that the someone's worth as a school district, um, it was kind of a deal breaker. Whereas mm -hmm. now they can kind of come in and they're showing people properties in Dover for four fifty, mm -hmm. five hundred, and then they can show them properties in Rollinsburg for three fifty, and it's they consider it a smoking deal, even though it's I mean it's high for mid Stockdale. I was uh, it's going to be Stockdale is maybe a two twenty to two fifty uh, sale price, but now we're seeing three twenty to three fifty in there. So it's just I think. Part of that is also Scott's you know, that's kind of driving some of the markets for the downtown area as well. So there's a lot of things going on that where I think there's kind of the perfect storm for values to go up. Any other questions that you might have? I am curious, not to do what's wrong, but people came to me with a view tax. Yes, that's another thing we're going to be looking at. Uh, there was we had two sales on Silver Street where they were abnormally high um, when compared to other sales on Silver Street in 2016. It just, it, there were ranches similar to the other properties that sold, uh, and the only um, difference that we could really glean was that they were looking over that pasture out back, you know, 22 something acres between General John Sullivan and Silver. Um, that was really the only difference, and we had other sales on Portland that also look over uh, similar pastures that were also high that kind of explain that, all right, maybe we should be assessing, um, not necessarily the view, but the privacy out back that they know they're, they're going to keep. Um, That's why my assessment went up so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's just, it was I something that, I don't have it. yeah, no, it's, it's something that um, I don't think, uh, like two people come in that were definitely adamant that, you know, I could see where the value was coming from. One of them was the sale, but I'm not sure it's being applied consistently. So that's one of the things that we're going to check and make sure that we're applying to everyone consistently that is able to have that correct and have that same view. Because um, what if you're viewing your own land? Well, that's one of the things we're going to look at because we do have a property where we were applying a view to property that is there, and I'm not sure. I think when we were doing that on the reevaluation, re we weren't considering the fact that it was theirs. Okay. I'm not sure that part of this. Fix as well. We're gonna look at that. Okay. This year. Oh yeah. 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 Before yes. When. Um, and they're gonna get letters too. For the properties, this is another. I'll check for the properties that came in and discussed with us. If there are any changes, they will definitely get a letter. I'm not sure on the property. Day. If someone was being assessed for that view and we change it and their property value goes down and they didn't come in for a hearing, mm -hmm. we typically don't send out notices. It's mm -hmm. just a. I don't want to say nice surprise. It's just like, oh, look, they lowered our assessment when they get their final tax. Um, but I can't imagine there'll be too many of those. So if the board wants us to send out letters to all the changes, we can. Um, we just typically don't because if it's a larger town, it could be a larger amount of notices. And usually, if values go down, people aren't necessarily. Well, I feel strongly about Woods Run. Just be, or, oh, absolutely. I can understand yes. that. Yeah. yeah. I'm sort of neutral on the, on the others. But. How many would we be talking about? There's not many. I think there are 15 properties that we currently have assessed with views, and there were three that came up in the hearings where the property owner, I don't want to say students, but is under the impression that they those properties aren't assessed for review but have it. Okay. Um, so we're going to look at those, and as well as we're going to click on those parcels that are the pastures and find the abutting properties okay. and make sure that we're being consistent. Right. There's only 15 or so. Yeah, I don't think there's that many, so I don't mind setting up yeah. those to stand in. That'd be great. Yeah. The ones that don't have it, if we find out they do, they'd obviously get a letter because their assessment's going to go up, um, which we don't like doing, but we'll see. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Chad. Appreciate so it. So Will you let us know oh, absolutely. when when the final, only because, you know, we're itching to get the tax rate 
process started? Uh, once I get the finalization that we can send out the notices of the changes, <coughs> I will email you what the final value is and everything okay. so that you can... And if, does that notice... What the, that notice says what? That notice doesn't say that I can go in and run the MS-1, does it? What, is, what does that notice say? Uh, no, the, the email I was sending you would be this, to, this is the new value, so you can okay. go in and run the MS-1 at that point. I can, so you've yes. got them in place. Once yeah. we get that notice, the changes are in place, we can go in and run the MS-1. Correct. Okay, yep. very good. At that point, we should have already contacted Andrew, and she would have sent us all the if changes she made since... May, so whatever, time, whatever, and something. then we'll make sure that we get them all and then send it back to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate no it. No Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, now, I, I, I'd like to get on with our meeting. I know that there's people who came here, so what do you think about opening this up just for comments, not an extended conversation with the folks who are here? Okay. Any comments, questions? Okay. How much did we miss? What time did that start? Yeah, what time did you guys start? Oh, okay. yeah. no, seven. Uh, ten seven ish is how I usually say it. You know, we, you know, from when people. Can you just tell us what went on before we came? Yeah. I don't know when you walked in. But seven o'clock. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what you missed. I mean, he, yeah, he was, missed the, the policeman gave him his report. No, he just wants to know about Oh, the avatar. You, yeah, you missed like a th two or three minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't bad. Yeah. But I don't know when you came in. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so, so the uh, notices are going to go out when? Uh, by mid September. Hopefully early September. September. By mid but then we're stuck with that number, really. Yes. And you have to go through the, so the whole abatement. abatement process. Yes. So if we think it's wrong right now, and then we, we say we, there should be a uh, reevaluation of the whole town, then we need to do that now. Because we're just guessing at what he's going to do, right? Uh, it, that would be the board's decision yeah. so, to I mean, do something like that. It's a drastic move. I'm not. The board has not indicated yet. No, no. I, I, yeah. I, I just. It seems like. It seems like. Yeah, we think we're, we might make some changes, but you know, it could be a dollar, <laughs> and and so by the time you get it, now it's too late. Now you have to go through this whole process again, or wait another year. This is the mistake that we made last time, is that we didn't, we didn't chomp into it early. Uh, did he address at all the land values? Yes. So what did he say? Uh, that's what I missed, probably. That the land values, he, he, the sale that he had been using, he, that was so high in value, he had, what he thinks happened is that the amount that he originally ascribed to the house's portion of that sale was probably lower than it should have been. That okay. Actually, that house, its construction and its right. interior details were probably worth more. Okay. And so when he then added to that house's value and subtracted that from the total uh, land, the total sale, then there was a lesser amount uh, to apportion to the land. So that's how he's coming up with like the 260, 270 value so on the he land. Is, he is uh, he is making an adjustment on all of the land in okay. the woodlands. Did he say how much? No, because he, no. So, and then he's also making some other adjustments with regard to homes that he's gone in and, and looked at and, uh, and the like, so. Okay. I mean, that would be really helpful if you tell us, because the waterfront lots should be one value, and then all the other lots should be yeah. pretty, I mean, within 20 grand of each other. He's, well, if he addressed it sounds yeah. like he might get the letter out in a Could, week. I'm sorry, th this is the board meeting. Oh, we, you know, I hate to do this I to thought you. Were open. I hate to do it. It's not a, it's not a completely open discussion. Yep. I thought you were sorry. Yeah. So, Jody, what, what, what were you? He did address that because you're an association, you all do have people that are on the waterfront river road have waterfront property. And that I did the hear rest, that part. You yeah. did hear that part yeah. where you all have water access. Right. So there's a separate Five thousand dollars, you said. Yeah, I heard so, that part. Yeah. So what I was what I was after was if he said, Yeah, it looks like I'm gonna knock him down seventy grand, that's that's probably the good yeah, he, that'd be he, the he's, he didn't he did not say okay. that. He's right. working on it, he's gonna get these letters out as soon as he can. It looks like they're still reviewing. Okay. Still going through that. And then just for uh, as a real estate agent, what I can tell you is what what caused the values to go up wasn't necessarily that, that you went to Marshwood and you're not going to Somerset. When you went to Marshwood, what happened is 
you have an exodus out of Maine into Rollinsburg for all the people who don't work in Maine, that's what caused the push-up. It wasn't necessarily because they don't like Summer Drill School or Marshwood School. It's the people who were in Marshwood wanted to stay in Marshwood, and now they see that they could pay lower income tax, no state income tax. Sure. That's what caused well, the mm -hmm. exodus. But it's related to Marshwood. Absolutely. It's related but, but, to Marshwood. But what you got was you got Maine residents that wanted to come over here. I don't ever have a problem selling Rollinsford versus Dover. I, I mean, I personally don't have a problem with that ever. I mean, I never had a problem with that. So I think that's a mark that comes on that was probably undeserved. But Well, but, it is in li it's yeah. in listings. But it I did cause the values to go up. Yeah. I see it in listings. And right. so usually yeah. what realtors put in listings, I think, are the things that they think are people going well, to find Well, because it gets those main people. So. Right. So, yeah. So. All right. Uh, then we will keep. Thank you. I appreciate sure. again. Thank you for coming. Thanks Enjoy. for having us. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see. So, uh, so I don't yet have a date on when Tom is going to speak to us about the set. So what? Do you want to uh, speak to about we set? And I let me apologize now for the welfare thing. I think we were. Good. Did we say we were going to have time? I I didn't. I didn't notice it. I didn't ask. I haven't noticed it. So I apologize. That was my oversight. Um, so but now my calendar does say we have two of them yeah. potentially scheduled, right? Yeah, the 18th is class six rows and the 25th is minimum housing. Okay. So All right. Yeah, I thought you were not going to be here. I'm going to be. The first half an hour and a little room over there. Oh, right, right, right. Over here. Okay, so we'll talk about them next week. Okay, fine. Very good. That's okay. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, of course. All right. Um, highway transfer. So, um, let what me just What are you going to talk about next week? Huh? I'm sorry, what? what? What did you say you're going to talk about? The housing minimum standards. I think okay. um, Michael was working on the policy. Okay. We need to look at it before we do the, right. do sure. the public hearing. So the board needs to at least say this yeah. is what we're, what we're proposing. Okay. Um, all right, so highway transfer station. Uh, let, me, let, me, uh, let me just make a general comment about the transition, and then we'll go through, the, go through it more quickly. But I, uh, I want to say thank you to Jody for having taken this on and for really doing a good job at grabbing a, a big project by the horns or something and helping us with that. So th same, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, we'll, we'll kind of go through this now. So transportation damage. We, did you have a meeting? I can't. Yes, and I had a meeting with Humphrey on Friday, Friday afternoon. Um, the chairman is from Stratum, and one of his comments was, if you guys can't work this out, I'm going to resign as chairman, because it's not my fault. Was he serious? Yes, he was. <laughs> So he, so, and he, so he is telling us about part of the truck consortium? Right. So he was impatient with the truck consortium. Right. So, so um, Lee, Epping, us, and Northwood um, are pretty much the And Matt Bird. And Matt, and Matt Bird um, are part of that. And us and Northwood seem to be the only ones having issues. Well, come to find out, the other towns are texting Paul when they need him. And we're calling him. Okay. And so they seem to work well. And one of the gentlemen um, from one of the towns says, yeah, I used to have a problem with them too, but I took them behind back and now we're fine. So, <laughs> well, I don't know what that, you know. Right. right. So, so I said, well, I don't think that's an option. Yeah. So um, we were going we to have a meeting with him um, again. Um, him, me. The truck, the driver. Okay. So there's two Pauls, one's the chairman, one's the driver, both me. So we were also, um, I would say chastised. The four other towns, the pictures that we sent, let us know that our concrete is not to the right length. When you have a, a can, you're supposed to have a lot more concrete in front of it for the tr can to go up and down. I said, Pike did it, a road agent designed it. Someone should have noticed that. 
So, for what we have for now, I don't want to cut up brand new concrete or cement, uh, um, tar. So, it, going forward, when it does break up, because it will break up, we can just extend, extend, cut it and extend it and put the concrete down there. Okay. So, but I was told that it was wrong. I'm like, it's brand new. Pipe, de pipe designed it, a road agent designed it, no one said a word to us. So that one I was like, okay. Um, our new compactor does have um, a little bit more room than our old compactor. Mm -hmm. It has about five or six more feet in front of it. Mm -hmm. The other one is pretty much right to the edge. So they do have a little bit more leeway there. But the other towns have a whole 20 feet in front of it. So, so the whole truck, because Correct. the truck of the weight of the truck, sits on the concrete. And not on the you know, right. So I sent you guys a list of everything I've been working on. The yeah, talking was, points. that's what prompted my comment. It's, it was thorough. Yeah. It was, uh, do you want to go through that now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you want me to read it out? Yeah, well, let's, because some of the things, one um, one. yeah, some let's of just it, go I need one, your one by, exactly. So let's just do it one by one. Okay. So Russ is going to bring over the time cards for the transfer station on Tuesday of next week because of the holiday, and then Monday starting after that. Perfect. Um, Russ will bring to Caroline the money and the slips for the MSW and everything else that gets called. Mm -hmm. um, transfer station attendants will post the new winter hours, which are starting in two weeks after Labor Day. They're already posting that their call is done Labor Day, and they're going to post the winter hours. Um, did we want something at Town Hall stating the new hours? Because when I got there today at 2, there was a line at quarter of 2 waiting to get in the transfer station. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Let me, let so me make a note of that, Joe. If we can make an A-frame. Um, Salma, can you make an A-frame and just put it outside here on Main Street? You know, the like just a sandwich yeah. boards or something. Who just does a, that for us? Just some Sharpies. Yeah, I mean, hand done. I do all of the... Does cake weathering now? I do. Mm -hmm. oh. She, right. I don't she did those. I think she did. I just think that would be helpful. So sandwich board. See it a little bit more often. With the winter hours. Yeah. So because they start soon. They yeah. start like the Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, the night, the fifteenth, I think. Um. I think that's it. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Transfer station attendants aware of they are aware of their CPR training this fall. Um, Are they able to come? Do you know? I will find out. Just Not like I'm going to be in contact. I mean, it would be nice yes. to know that somebody's <laughs> going to show up. I know we've gotten a, a waiver request from Caroline because yes. she's not um, available that night. So yep. Yep. I hate to have somebody show up and then there's nobody here for right. the town. For them. Um, Russ is taking the universal waste training because he was allowed to take a next level of class on the 14th. He does want to double check with Caroline to make sure that it went through. Yeah, that's a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, the highlight, what, what did you mean by that? <coughs> Their certifications have to be shown at the transfer station, but they weren't in their employee public folders when I looked in their public folders today. So their employee folders didn't have their current certifications. But is it posted at the transfer station? Yes. So it's posted at the transfer station, but we need a, we copy. Need a copy here. So okay. that I have to follow through on. Okay. Armin is covered till April of next year um, mm -hmm. because he took his in April. Mm -hmm. The new employee does <clears throat> not has not taken the class yet. So the white bins are those donated bins. It says yeah. donate your clothes. Yeah, I often wondered about those. They're in the wrong spot now because they used to be up where our new can is. So mm -hmm. we moved them down. It's up to the board. Do we want to keep them or do we want to just get rid of them? Are they used? What they are, are used, and from what I understand, because my question was, well, if we get rid of the cans, are more people going to dump clothes into our garbage? And that's what the transfer station agents thought too. Who picks up? It's a company that um, picks them up, and supposedly they're nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Who has it? It's not nonprofit. So. But it goes back out somewhere. All right. So, so is I say is, is, is the I forget. Planet aid. Is it planet aid that it's there? I believe so. so. Um, I'm fine with it. We just need to find a new home for it. Okay. Do we want to leave it up to the transfer station agents to decide where they put it? I don't have. Are they able to move it? 
Yeah, the Bobcat can move. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, I don't have a. Yeah, they moved it down, so now. I they assume that they have a, you know, they have a decent idea about flow, and mm -hmm. so unless you have a particular objection, I would say, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, um, uh, we've already saved one week of MSW and two demo can trips already this month. That's wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. That's great. So they said they didn't need to call, and they probably won't need to call this week. Um, between the two cans, they won't have to call again until probably next Monday or Tuesday. So um, Russ is calling Lamprey while he's texting Lamprey. <laughs> he does have his cell number. He does text him. Um, and if Russell is not there, Armin will be the one to text him. Okay. So they do have his text number, which I also got at our me my meeting at Lamprey. Um, we need to find a way to in encase the new compactor because our theory was, and what we were told, was that the conduit was going to run underneath and they were going to be able to press the button from there. Yeah. That's not the case. Hmm. Apparently regulations, because the compactor is right in front of you, whenever you smash it, you have to close the door and press the button and smash it, which happens daily, while, uh, especially on Saturday. So. Um, Somebody has to be standing at the compactor all the time because anybody can walk up and press the button. Mm -hmm. which, you, which on the other compactor, it's set down low, no one gets involved with the com compress, and the buttons are encased in a building. So they need a nice little shed that encompasses the button on the inside, a door, a window so they can see if they need to help people, and a place to sit. And then, and then we have to worry about heating. Mm -hmm. So right now we have agents standing in the hot sun all day long. In the winter we're going to have them standing in the cold all winter. So. so it's sort of similar to what we did on one side. Right. So they'll be using one or the other depending on which compactor is active. Is that right. correct? Is there any other way to engineer that or is it that's just the way it's going to be? It's going to have to build that little building? Not that kind of... <laughs> so they were the... They were under the understanding that they could stay in the warm hut while people were using that and then go over and press the button as needed. But that's not the case. They have to be there. So, because the buttons are literally right there. Here's the opening, here's the buttons. And there's no way you can prevent? Like block the buttons? Or yeah, like, like a like safety, that. yeah, a safety yeah. switch or something like that that requires you don't have something to have more than just... Or anything to yeah, yeah apparently or? not. <laughs> But that's what I'm thinking. If you could have something that would require the attendant, yeah. Right? Yeah. Door. So, and a re and a resident has already commented saying that their company, from what the agents were telling me, but the company, their company that they work for, know that you have to stand there. And <laughs> so. So. So we need to cost out. Uh, uh, we do have a little hut down below. It's not insulated. It might be big enough to do that, um, but that would require um, some, I don't want to say the word engineering, but some, some uh, finesse of moving it up and seeing if we can do it with that. If not, I actually asked them to sleep on it and give me some good ideas this week. Okay. Well, so, let's, let's let them sleep on it. Yeah. See if any good ideas come. Because they do have construction background. So. No. Okay. Um, they can think of something, but it's clearly, you know, they need to be in safe. Right. The residents who are who are dropping off their trash need to be safe, and our attendants need to mm -hmm. be as right. comfortable as we can make it for them. Right. Um. So that's why that one was highlighted. Um. The part-time highway is carrying the rec phone right now. The police chief emailed saying, who do I contact? Yes. So I called and I said, well, who do you normally contact? They said, there was coverage. I thought there was coverage. When they, when they told us about this vacation, there, there was coverage. Because we're still on vacation. We're not on... Yeah, he's not no longer employed. He is, right. He's just so, telling that he's not here. Okay. I think, um, I mean, last year, I think we remember last year when we asked him those kinds of questions that, you know, we'll just call the police. And the police now saying, well, what do we do? 
Right. So I guess it depends on the nature of the problem. If it's something where they just have to put a cone, the police are able to do, you know, right. to do that. But if it's something else, like a tree. Yeah. I thought there was a, a, um, a system like we have, a mutual aid system we had, we had with the fire or police that, that if it was something serious, they could call. But we had have a phone tree of people who could call. Well, I talked to John this morning as well. To who? John, Lieutenant. Oh, you're yes. The lieutenant. Yes, the lieutenant. <laughs> um, and there's usually a number for them to call. There was no number left this time. Okay. Um, what they would normally um, call Jeff for is if a tree fell and he'd be able to cut it into pieces, push right. it off to the side, and then in the morning pick it up with a brush cutter. Um, the If there's like an accident or whatever, the highway, uh, the Fire department is usually the ones that the police will call um, to help out as well because they can get to the side and stuff like that. Um, so, um, frantically in my panic, I was like, "How do we get? How does? How do we get in touch with Whitney? So, who is our part time or three days a week?" And right. So, I gave him the rec phone because the rec phone is not being used. Gave the number to the chief and the fire. Um, and he'll hold it during the 7 to 3 hours of this year. Okay. He's back on the desk, and then after 3 o'clock, Norm Drew offered to um, be on call, and we're working out when he's not in town to who, who's going to be on call as well. Um, he requests, um, if he does get called, $50 an hour with a minimum of three hours. He hasn't been called yet. Uh, I don't have, I mean, that seems, I, that seemed totally yeah. reasonable to me. Okay. So, are we good with that? And yeah, we're good with that. Else? Caroline was supposed to see if she could get a no one responded to. Yeah. So, you know, as long as there's just some little contract that, that lays out these terms. Great, great. And I'll let you know who the other person will be, and I'll okay. keep you all in the loop on who to That's call and the phone tree and everything yeah, else. Yeah, great. This, is, this email was really, really helpful and reassuring and all those other good things. So. We'll, we'll Thank you. decompress the... Decompress. Uh, <laughs> um, we will deliver the time cards to Carolina on Mondays. Wayne and Mike um, place cutting blades and plows when they're both together. They are in, they are in. They just need the two people to put them on the thing. Um, Wayne and Mike are aware uh, that the sidewalks no attachment. We need to make sure it's ready to go. Make sure it's oiled. The bobcat. Yes. Um, and I made a comment, neither of the part-time road agents are our plow guys. They have no interest in plowing. Plow <laughs> They're not, and they don't want to be. Yes. Got so it. I said, are you going to be plowing in the winter? Because this is his first winter with us. He goes, no. This is Wayne. This is Wayne. So, okay. so I reached out to our plow guys that we had last year, and come to find out several of our numbers are wrong. So, in our contact numbers? Yes. Yeah, so I, I made a list of all of our contact numbers for the transfer and highway and plowing, and some of the numbers are wrong. Okay. So I have to reach out and figure out how to get in touch with them. Did you I'm talk to any of the plow guys? I left messages okay. with one. I believe the other two are wrong when we look at my okay. list. Um, one is not in service. I left messages with the other two. So, And I'm assuming the current numbers are in Jeff's phone, but i got to wait till Friday for that. All right. Um, well, thank you again. I, I had a thought go through my head, and it, it, I don't know what it is. Maybe it will come back to me. Let me, what's that, the end of my email? Uh, and I then so. I sent... Inventory. Yes, yeah, so they did the inventory. They added a few things to the list. Everything that was on the inventory sheet is still there, plus a few new items that were bought since then. And then I went through and checked the hours and the mileage on all the equipment as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. Oh, I think I know my comment. We're, we are getting applications. Now, I haven't looked at, I haven't looked at them. I'm not on a committee, and I've got other things to do. Six or seven. I think. Yeah, but at least stuff's coming in. So, mm -hmm. so I would like um, you to take a look at those. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, I will. I will then. Just a want. quick glance. Okay. Absolutely. Cause be happy to. Um, I have a feeling we're not going to be interviewing all of them. Nice to be expected as okay. well. Mm -hmm. you know, not a surprise. Okay. So a lot of people overreach. Okay. And it just kind of happens. You get this pile, and the first thing is the really quick decision, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So, not surprised by that. All right. Um, all right. And our this meeting is, with them is on Thursday. Okay. Uh, so I have one thing for not non-public myself at the begin at the end of the meeting. So we'll okay. we'll uh, talk about that then. Um, Mike, any questions? Any comments? Very good, thank you. Yeah, really. Thank you so much for stepping in. It's not a big, it's, I mean, it is a big deal. It's not a small matter. <laughs> it's, it's a really big deal. This is an important it's part of my scope. the surfaces that we do, so that's wonderful. Let's, um, SALT proposals. Um, I thought you were just going to get information for us, but I see you actually signed the proposals, which is fine. But let's talk about how, well, why it's signed, signed and yes, sure. why. So, so um, Lovely conversation, more salt than I needed to know about. Um, Granite, Granite State Mineral Salt is more watery. It's from a different mine. Um, you pay uh, per, per weight. And, and there's water. And there's water. And which is heavy. Right. So most people don't usually use this salt. Jeff doesn't like them. This is what he call it clump. Clump. So it, yes. the fact that it has more water is why it clumps. Is why it clumps. So the bulk safety salt is what we used last year. Um, it's a drier salt. Um, it can blow, um, clump up. you got to keep stirring it. Um, the bulk wizard, blizzard wizard is, it, say that five times fast, mm -hmm. um, okay. is used in much colder temperatures. It's for those sub-zero, deep freeze type places. Now, we have not in the past used that. Never. So. Also comes in, in it, and it can be, it, apparently it's a different color. They color it. So, so you can tell. Yeah. Oh, so you can tell. Yeah, but you're so, not using the it's But it's twenty dollars more time. Right. Yeah. So I also pulled all of our budget from Salt last. Well, Caroline gave me January to April of what we spent in Salt. So this I have an idea. Yeah, because it was in the current file, two thousand. And we we upped, uh, we revised the budget for Salt for this mm -hmm. year. Right. The end of the year. Right. I I don't remember what. By well, what amount, but I can take a look if it's important. Yeah, so um, I guesstimated um, so far that we probably bought probably about 700 ton. We told them that we would use a thousand. So I have to go through the numbers. Um, but we've so, so the recommendation that Jeff said was to, to reserve that same number mm -hmm. of tons, so the thousand. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. So, so the the proposal has been signed. Jody signed it. So and it is with Morton. It is for the you know reserving a thousand tons. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's all we need to. Do you have questions? Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Good. All right. That's the salt. The transition. Let's just. Um, I do have a charge for the search committee that I sent down. I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so let me let me go to it myself. charge so you know I'm just making clear that the board has the final decision we're expecting hoping for a recommendation from them but the board has the final decision and that their first order of business is to review applications interview finalists and make a recommendation to the select board and I mentioned to them that the applications are due by the 8th and it's sort of a semi road we, you know we said in the other we look at any application that comes in by the 8th, mm -hmm. uh, and under no obligation to review any that come afterwards. But if the board, some continue to come in, and you're not happy with the first batch, you commit to keep looking. And then this, I said, if there's additional time or interest on the part of the search committee, uh, that we, and this is what we want to talk about, we're amenable to hearing feedback on, and I said, the job description, which we can attach to them, mm -hmm. and the compensation is set by us, just if they, you know, if they have anything that they want to say. Is there anything else you might want to add to this, or what, do you, what is your thought on this charge? Um, give me a second. Yeah, absolutely. about staffing. Um, staffing and what? Uh, like, like what we're running into now. What are our plan B's? So, 
You mean our, you the transition? To, yeah. No, not only that, but when we do get a new hire, if we get a new hire or if we subcontract out, what are our plan Bs? If you subcontract out, it's the company's oh, job. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, didn't, so, I forgot about that. So that is uh, something that here, feedback on the feasibility of contracting out all some of the snowplow snow plowing. Is that, mm -hmm. is that what we wanted to say? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the feasibility of contracting all with some of the snow plowing. Okay. And then on call. On call is interesting. How on best call. to manage on call, is that? Yeah. Because right now there's not. Okay. Okay. So how best to manage on call situations. Okay. So with your uh, okay, that what I will do is send this out to the search committee. Thank you. All right. Back to the agenda. All right. Uh, search committee, transitional duties. We've talked about that. Termination processes, roadside mowing. Uh, Caroline said that Wayne and Michael, Mike Spinney, are aware of you know, the need to follow the as chase the chase truck, mm -hmm. the plowing, and to pick up debris, blah blah blah. So it looks like, but feel free to check in with Caroline as we get closer or whatever. Yeah, they left. Um, Jeff had left the list of things to do. We got a copy here, and I asked them to. Um, this is a list of things to do for them while he's away, um, and they're just picking it off as they go. Um, one of them was potholes, and they checked it off. Well, that's a continue, on a continuing basis. So. Yeah. <laughs> but after the two weeks is over, we're still going to be in the same boat that we are in. So this list, I'll have to fit, sit down with them. And they say, checked off potholes? They checked off potholes. When did they check it off? You know? It had to be within the last, between Monday and now. The pothole on Oak Street has been there for almost three weeks. On our part of Oak Street, I suspect. Yeah. My, my street never got so, yeah. I think they might have missed one if they, <laughs> they did that. Yeah. Well, that, that, thank you. I think that's what I was Maybe trying to say earlier. Wayne was here when I walked in this morning, yeah. and, he, and he was telling, he was told me, he's got a, they've got a list that they're working through. Right. Yes. So that's the, that's the list. The list. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Paul gravel to park, four loads. What park and why? And no one came in. Well, the gravel is still at the transfer station, so that must be the gravel that moved. That must be down to Scott by Scott Bicentennial, Bicentennial Park. So, um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. Wayne has been great about something he did not sign up for. Right. So for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and and Russ too. Happy Russ is, he, he retired and wanted something just very right. key part time couple hours a week. So. <laughs> he doesn't know how to plow though. You know, and he was very clear when I interviewed him that he did not want to plow ever again. Yes. He did for the state. So. <laughs> like, can you blame? You know, no, I don't blame yeah. him. No, no. Yeah. Just, and when I asked him today, he was like, no. Yeah. So he's clear. Oh, he is. He is clear. Yes. All right. Uh, so that's ro so roadside mowing. We talked about on call coverage terms, uh, sidewalk issues. So that's that's a so we're going to have to add to this list because yes. I think. So let's talk about the email that we got from the Pattersons. Uh, today. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find it. So we got a list from the Pattersons who live across the street and um, who do a lot of walking in the village. Mm -hmm. So she is outlining some concerns, not sure whether it's the state or us, but they all have to do with sidewalks. And just generally speaking, I think sidewalks are our issue. There are there are issue whether you're on a state road or not a state road. There are issues, and so she was outlining issues. A lot of it has to do with overgrown shrub, you know, overgrown weeds or whatever that are right. making it difficult to walk. And reminded us that oh, by the way, school is starting, and my children will be walking. So it's on Lower Main Street, uh, Front Street, Church Street, Upper Main Street. Mm -hmm. So, what does the board? Does the board think we we should add these to the to the list? Yeah, I would tell, and that's pretty easy. So uh, Wayne or whoever could go down with the weed whacker. Yeah, weed whacker maybe. Chop down, at least the ones that are on Front Street. Yeah. 
So can we add that to their to their list? Can you would you be willing to convey that to them? Yeah, I'll print it off and I can get it to um, probably maybe we can mail it to Caroline who maybe can uh, if they I don't know if she sees them on a regular basis, but anyway, I'll leave it up to you to figure out how best to check in with them. But that could be a small matter that would be and really the, helpful. some of the some of the ones they were talking about are related to the balloon building. Some machine. of the sidewalk Some issues, of, yeah. The vast majority of that stuff was actually removed, so um, they may have just overgrown it. I think he may be coming in uh, to the planning board on next Tuesday. He indicated he better mm -hmm. send me back, so I, I can also mention it to him. But, but if it's, but if in it's the on sidewalk. his property, he means it may be hanging over. I did go back and look. I, there was a lot of stuff that was hanging over, and he removed all those bushes. So. Right. And there are properties like the one between Mechanic and Prospect that it's it's their bushes that are just leaning over. So on trying to think of it's I'm well, maybe we could ask a property owner if they could I mean, take care other, of it. But the other bushes that are actually an issue, ironically enough, are accidents. The people who can't actually see going around the corner try and take a left onto onto Main Street, but I mean, so if if a tree overhangs into a roadway, into the right of way, we, yeah. we take care of it. Right. So I don't know why it would be any different, even if the shrub starts in somebody's property, if it's overhanging yeah. the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, so are we okay for when they come in and say, you can cut my bushes? Well, that's just it, right? So we need to talk to people to start cutting the shrubs back, I would think. Send them a letter and say, hey, you know, like your shrubs are stuck in the sidewalk. You really should be taking yes, care of it. Uh, yes, I guess I didn't mean that point so much. I, I, maybe I meant if it's really a weed, not not a landscape thing. Yeah. Oh, no, the, the one on Front Street for sure. She's yeah, talking about just, the one yeah, just weeds down and, towards the park going yeah. on the main. But, like, you have weeds on oak that are literally leaning into the street. So, and they just yeah. sway into oak. Yeah. So. That's what, that's what Front Street looks like. On that, on the so you can ask Caroline to, to see if she can call property owners, if we can identify the, some of the property owners and I see if they... I don't feel, I don't feel that it's necessary. Most other towns don't think it's going through with this. And they, I'm fine. With I'm fine. Of, I'm fine and we'll deal with whatever. I'm fine with that. It's, it's in the public way. Right. It's in the public way. So I'm not so, and our or ordinances would support yeah. that. So okay. I don't want to make when they, when they come in, I'm going to look you this can, way. You, you <laughs> can get <laughs> out of the bedroom. Yep, that's, and that's fine, Mike. That's okay. I don't think. I said what you're saying. I mean, I, I yeah, get it. it's just yeah, it's just a question of time, you know. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that I can't picture the, the shrubs on on the prospect and the canopy. I just I'll go take a look at them. It, they're actually on Main. It's between the two streets, and it's where it gets really, really tight. I looked at it yeah, tonight I, as I drove in. I believe I just can't picture what they look like. I'm sure it's some sort of. I know exactly what she's talking about. On the front of the case, what they're doing. I'm trying to catch a look at that, really. Okay, well, thank you for contacting me. You know who used to maintain that was Jack Carroll. Jack and Shane used to take care of that. Jack was not able to do that. Right. Physically can't do it. Not that it's his responsibility, but it's in front of his department. Yeah, no, I understood. Yeah. It's always nice when yeah. citizens can step forward. And can I add Mrs. Patterson's email list? Yeah. The weed wacky on Main Street in front of like that Stockdale Circle area that comes out of the concrete on the sidewalk just drives me crazy. Yeah, I, I can't picture it, but mm -hmm. but I trust that that's there. Yeah, it's yeah. like that in front of my house, sure. too. I just look at stuff. Yeah, yeah. they just drive me crazy. On the sidewalk. Sure, <laughs> that's in a public way. That's ours. Okay, uh, transfer station Saturday coverage. Yeah, so when I was having the meeting with the transfer station agents, um, Saturday coverage, another, just for Saturdays, would be very, very helpful. It's their busiest day. Now that they can't leave a compactor, and we want to make sure that the demo cams are being paid for properly, and then the cardboard is being sent up properly, mm -hmm. we just need that extra. So, so is Wayne not working in the transfer station on the weekends? He's only he's just strictly highway. Right? It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday highway. Okay. So Paul is our transfer station agent. Okay. 
So we have Paul, Armin, and Russ. Mm -hmm. oh, Paul doesn't do work weekends? He does. So they want a fourth person. Right. I got you. Yeah. So um, my thought about transfer station, snowplow, maybe even highway, is to get as big a pool as possible mm -hmm. so that when something happens, we, you know, we can, there are people to move around. So, so I guess, you know, looking for people who are sort of don't mind just coming in here and there, sort of, you know, that would be really what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So I have no objection to trying to get an ad out for an additional transfer station for Saturday. To fill in. To fill in. Or, well, to add, you're talking about an addition. Right. So part time, you know. Well, it's gonna. T it will take us a while to get there. That's true. Right. We won't find somebody right away. So it would be. That is true. What is it? Four hours. Is it uh, on Saturday? Is it how many hours? Is it six? Six hours. Five hours. Six. 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 Thank Charlie. You. Thank you. Six hours. So they get. I think to start. Eight. Eleven. 1050, let's say 11. So it's, it's 60, 60, yeah. So, yes, I think, you know, for this year, we'll need to think through the budget for, for next year, but I, I think we can support that. And again, it's not going to happen right away, so. And so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when is that? Is that the first Saturday of the month? Yeah, Saturday. 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 Um, his schedule changes, so I gotta get right. in touch with yeah. him because that means, yeah. like last week they were both on on Wednesday because he worked Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. and then that means there was no one there Friday. So <coughs> I gotta figure out scheduling. So and okay. then I need to know when someone's not there. Yeah. So and let Chief know that no one's in my room. No in there to answer the phone. Right. So just. Just a scheduling thing. And yep. Well, again, thank you. This is, yep. Appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. All right, we've talked about the, sh whoops, the shed, so unless people need to talk about it again, we'll just go on. Um, all right. Uh, project updates. So culverts. I mean, Willie Street was, I went last week to look at it. It was just about ready to, for, by the end of the day, they thought it was going to be ready for paving. I don't know when the paving was going to happen, but so they're now mobilizing at the lower mill. Yeah, so it starts this morning. Okay, and I know Brian checked in, and I said talk to Coyle Tanner, and they responded. They've already started the mobilization, mm -hmm. so so they're at the lower mill this week. Um, the other thing, uh, we don't have the task order yet for construction oversight. Um, they're working on it this week. They Coyle Tanner. Mm -hmm. uh, then there was a request from Parker for an additional two weeks extension to the contract and the so the difficulty is you know, you know we're paying for this construction oversight so two weeks is could be really expensive mm -hmm. so I think I copied you when I asked Coyle Tanner to see if they could just make this one week yeah. and a one week extension so we'll see we'll see what comes of that um, are they asking for an extension because of well, the head walls didn't come in in time. They oh, said on yes, Willie Street. They had those so, on so. Yep. Now, if he's asking for this no this this no cost extension because he's thinking that you know there's a, a some total of five days where they won't be working and therefore we won't need oil tanner. That's one thing. But if it's increasing the number of days it's taking them to do it, then you know it's expensive for us. And I don't wish. I don't, just don't know how much expense, how much more expensive. And that's what makes me really nervous without having any idea what that task order is going to look like. It's worrisome. So, so uh, we'll see what happens with the no cost extension. And of course, this week, I'm guessing we ought to be able to find out whether that AUR is contaminated, whether there's any contamination that's, that's happening. Because I suspect, you know, the excavation, once they're there with their equipment, digging that trench is not. Not all that difficult. That's the that's an easy part, and then they, there'll be an environmental engineer person there that Parker is responsible for bringing in, who's going to be testing. Yeah, I don't. I'm, please don't tell me. I don't want to hear from anybody this week. It's the bottom line. Don't talk to me. 
Everything is fine. Everything is awesome. Right. Everything is awesome. All right, the Army Corps of Engineer placeholder only. Uh, SRPC, that was really, really interesting. Uh, I sort of heard that it was in the works that they were working on this kind of tax card, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, GIS data. Mm -hmm. And so they, they got in touch with us and want to know if we were interested in the demo, and I think the answer is yes. And so the, the um, suggested time is the 18th, 7-ish. Okay. Uh, we might have something. We might have a public hearing that night. Oh, it's six. Yeah, that's fine. This is yeah. This is during our regular meeting. And she said ten to fifteen minutes for the presentation and questions. Uh, I mentioned it to Caroline because I know Caroline has also made a request of the board to consider for next year. You know the avatar tax cards. So this would be an either or, right? That we would not if we chose to do something like that. Well, I guess we'll find out. Is it part of our contract with uh, our dues? With, uh, or is no, I think there is fee? going to be a, a fee, but my guess is but it would... Have done. Pardon? Potentially less than our assessment. I, I'm hoping. Or if the same, then, but with more information. Because it will be, you know, I, I think a nice, probably a nicer interface. So, yeah, so it doesn't... Doesn't cost us any to listen. Okay, then I will confirm that with SRPC. Uh, planning board, this is just a reminder, Mike, of some things that we hope are going to be on yeah, the agenda. They for already are uh, for uh, the fifth. Okay. Oh, right, not tomorrow night. <laughs> no. I'm jumping the gun. We're going to a different meeting tomorrow night. But I've, I've added one though. So we talked here about policy guidelines on classics roads yes. or guidelines, not yes. really, and about the sample growth ordinance. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's not necessarily going to be on. Uh, it's on the long-term agenda of the planning board. It might not be on. Okay, on that, that as long as it's, 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 it's as long as it's in the, the queue. Yes, it is. As long as it's in the queue, so it doesn't get lost. Yeah. Uh, then the other one is a request from Caroline. Yeah. And well, let me see if I can articulate this correctly. You know, she feels that there isn't really good articulation for a, someone who's trying to do something. Okay. That, the, that our website isn't sufficiently informative to know what form to use, who to talk to, what to see, and maybe John can help with that. John has been uh, talking about doing a training for planning board members and asking, um, I think of his name, the land use attorney. Back in No, um, he's a surveyor. Um, the other Radding, guy from John Radding. Oh, okay. Because he, he works with them all the time, not at any charge of the town, to come in and talk about um, planning and land use issues uh, that uh, frequently come before uh, our planning boards. And it hasn't happened yet. I can remind him again that he's offered to do this training. And part of that could be uh, the process documentation. And Carolyn, of course, would be more than welcome to attend if mm -hmm. she wanted to. Yeah. Else? So there are there's two there are two questions. One is the training that we did talk to John, and we're hoping that he yes. could arrange for the board. And, and the other one is the one I just tried to articulate. That is, should we have better documentation for people who are trying? Yes. To, yeah, yes. Okay. And can, is John? Can he help us with I this? Think John's okay. I mean, the, the the very first step that we've never had before is getting the um, the zoning documents. The zoning um, ordinance is on the website. And that's huge. So it's in process, so, I guess. Yeah, no, it is. But I mean, that alone yeah, is, is huge. It is and huge. Then, yes. The, the, uh, oh, I wish I didn't have these, these thoughts are just go flitting by and then they're completely like inaccessible to me. Um, but there's more. I mean, there's it had to do with, There's the subdivision regs, of course, that we really do. Oh, the, uh, the um, um, uh, wastewater uh, badge is yes. supposed to be, I don't know if she sent out the notice yet or not, but it's supposed oh, to be on hearing? this month's. Oh, okay. All right. Allegedly, yeah, we'll see. I guess okay. not, I don't know. If I think of what else just occurred to me, I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll bring it back. All right, right to know request. It's in process. Caroline did send a letter off to Mr. Megan saying that we received it because mm -hmm. we don't know how else to get in touch with them. We're working on it, and I sent the board uh, the emails that I had compiled that are on the 
on the website, yeah. Andrea. Some some of those the board was copied on, as well as Andrea. So I told her she doesn't have to. Obviously, she doesn't have to do those same threads. But if she has any other threads, right. that are hers alone. And so they they are working on it. Uh, Old Mill Lane placeholder for the time being. Uh, Tom, I think I'm meeting with Caroline and Tom Dume about SB 38 funds this week. So that's, and, and the, the what I'm meeting with is, you know, what kind of account should we have? Mm -hmm. um, it, should it, it, is it under the trustees? Is it not under the trustees? What, what, should, what should we do? And also just kind of reviewing with him the process that we've come up with with regard to the, um, our funds, our, our, our bond funds and the process that we're going to use by which we transfer them. We've talked to our treasurer about that, but we haven't actually talked to, to Tom, so we're just going to review all of that. And I think that's this week. Uh, transfer station fees. I sent you the link for the paper bag for you to look at. I don't know if we want anything we want to say now or, or, or whether we should take this off and put it on the... Oh, no, you really wanted to do something now because of the sticker fees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when I was at the meeting with, with Lamprey, Barrington has a bag system plus they have to bring it to the transfer station. Hmm. Right, it's a paper bag, but you bring it to the transfer station. Right, but they they have both. Like, like Dover has a bag system that they get curbside pickup. Summers Road has a bag system, you get curbside. Right, no, towns. But I know towns a lot of small towns do that. They have a, a yeah. pay as you go bag system, but you still have to take it you yourself. You have to take it. Right, I was like, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but that way, it's a, it's a use fee. You're right. paying for what you use. I mean, it, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, we can adjust the fee of the bag so that, you know, it's not a, a huge difference. I don't know what that would be, but, but anyway. Is there anything else you want to say about that tonight? We're just going to hold the table for now. Okay. I, I, I'm not, I have not read the uh, article. All right. But that doesn't mean we can't talk about it. I, I haven't read it. Fine. Okay. We got time. We'll save that. There. We'll save that and we always, we'll save that now. Uh, we always run out of it. Yeah. So we're, we are going to publish the zoning ordinances, and Caroline hasn't yet talked to her after my spoke there this morning to, you know, B&B. Is it B&B? B&B for yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, utility assessment method. Um, did I send you the email that I got? Yeah. So I was a little overwhelmed by what you would have to do to get agreements with the other utilities. And so yeah. I'm going to go back and read what we got from Avatar, which I did not do this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to read that again. And, you know, I think we're just going to have to go with whatever whatever the assessment currently is for the utilities because, you know, with no road agent, you know, with our projects and this and that, I just don't think we can tackle that unless I hear it differently from this board. Well, depending, I mean, you'd have to have, you have to have different, you have to have, so let's just say there are, who is it now? Not fair point, but I think they just bought out. Whoever so it is. Whoever they are now. Yeah, owns the poles, right? Yes. And so then, but they then lease to to um, cable. cable companies, I remember the name of this, Xfinity, Comcast, Comcast. Um, and to, in some cases, to public, not public, Eversource, Eversource, I don't know, they can't think of anyone's names anymore, Eversource, so you're going to have to have separate, it only gets worse by this, right, only at least three separate contracts there, right, Yeah. and potentially there could be other people releasing space on those poles, right, that we were told, so, I don't know how, I don't think at this moment we could we we could we have the capacity to I, to manage four at least three. I, I separate, agree with that um, assessment. I don't think we have the capacity with. at the moment. Um, not that it's, it may not be a good idea. So now, so with that in mind, I'm going to go back and read the letter, the utilities assessment letter that we got. And, and did I'm trying to remember? Did um, whatever they're called now, not fair point. Did they appeal or did they file a new? Lawsuit that's regarding, I, I mean, that's, just, that that's just it, right? So they did. So this is all, it's not it's settled, settled, anyways. Well, really. it was settled in the past, but for, for whatever that period was, and now right. there's this but period. But they've now brought yeah, a new I believe, suit, so. I believe so. And I believe so, but I will read that letter again, and and, and I encourage you if you have time also. So we're in the cycle of the uh, utility companies, yes. and healing and 
filing the suits. So yes, and legislation is always filed every year, um, taking away the authority of towns to uh, assess. Assess. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't know. Okay. So. Yeah, that's our our answer. Uh, historical committee. Do you want us to keep this here? Can we put it on? What, what is the story, Michael? What are we? They haven't met. They haven't have a new date for. Um, okay. I don't know. Maybe okay. September. I, okay. I mean, I, I would say keep it on only because uh, what they got to figure out what they want to do come budget time, right? So uh, for town meeting time, if we want to, if we need a um, a war article to do okay. something. All right. If, but after, if, it, if we don't get this resolved in September, they don't have a meeting in September, I say we'll take it off. Okay, so. fair enough. Uh, Chief Dusharma, I believe, is working on job descriptions for joint law, so that's in, in process. That's in joint laws, yeah. Everybody's trying to get job descriptions um, in and due by the 25th, uh, maybe 18th, so we can meet on the 25th. Okay. Yeah, I think 15th or 18th is sort of what I remember he, he had said. Well, for, I'm really, again, I'm really sorry I, I messed up on that. Um, do you want to try to schedule? Do we want to try to yeah. schedule something? So, um, yes. Are we hoping to have a, a are, we, are we planning a full meeting or do you want an abbreviated? Well, no, I mean, we'll do, we'll do whatever the work oh, is. Oh, because it was a holiday, I didn't know if we were planning on. That's fine, I mean, it is what it is. I'm yeah, it is, it is, is what it is, and we're, we're, we're not meeting the 11th, meeting, so my so guess is we should be take, meeting, you know, yeah. managing as much of the work as we so can. We so we can try, we can meet at 6 o'clock that night. You, I'll you be, can't. I'll be doing, I mean, if you all want to talk about it, it's fine. Or, yep. I mean, or we can meet. We're already doing something the 18th. And yeah, we're doing something the 25th. 28th, so I would, I, I'm, trust that you both can. Do you want to meet at 6 that night? 6. So that's the 6th, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, I don't think it's all fair workshop. September 6th, not 6th. Yeah. So, board member activities and updates. So, Michael, we're meeting tomorrow here at 9 o'clock to review SIP? Yeah. No? So you, yes. Oh, yes, yeah, you and I, yes. in the morning, yeah. to review the, the, the spreadsheet. Just the spreadsheet, so, so that you so know what to bring yes. to the yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, okay. well, not the content, just the just ins the, and outs of, of yes. the... Correct, yeah. correct. Just what the spreadsheet says in the various tabs. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's going on uh, tomorrow. And I am meeting with Tom on the 31st, Tom Dume and Caroline, about... You know various accounting kinds of things, yeah, and there is a cul can I one just let mm -hmm. me add one more thing. Mm -hmm. There's a culvert job meeting here on so on uh, Friday in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that is the local project team, which at this point is just Caroline and myself, Royal Tanner, and Parker. Okay. The USDA wants us to meet monthly, they, so they could be here for Thank that you. meeting. You forgot what you're going to say. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. So they could, uh, USDA could be here. I don't really know. They didn't say. They want to know when we're going to be here. Friday of the holiday weekend, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll be here. From North Conway? She has to come down from North Conway. She does. Here again. She may. Sure. She All may, right. yeah. You wanted to know. I told her. Okay. Um, all right, now Michael. We're going to for meetings to go to in the afternoon, though. Uh, anyway. Um, CIP is meeting on Wednesday evening. Of yeah. this week. Of this uh, this week. Okay. For us to hold a oh, small right. row. Oh. At six. No. Oh, so you're meeting this week. No, it's not this week. It's next week. Right. What are you talking about? Next week. I'm meeting with you in the morning. I just wrote by wrote down CIP. Okay. I meant to say with you and I in the morning talking about the spreadsheet. Good lord. It's late. It's not that late. Late enough. Apparently. All right. So you're meeting with the CIP on. Wednesday the sixth, but we, you know, um, and and on um, Tuesday the fifth, 
as a planning board, but we won't be meeting on Monday to announce that. I'm just saying now. All right. And, and Jody? Uh, the 7th, we have the 6th, a meeting with you, the 7th, a meeting with the search committee, the 9th, Sunday, the 9th is the rec committee. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, that, and just keeping up with what's going on. With the transfer station and the. Yeah, and I'll just keep you posted. As That's beautiful. What you absolutely phone number. Perfect. That is perfect. Okay, um, if there's nothing else, then we're ready to do folder work. Yeah, okay, we only have a few things on the folder tonight. The first is a duplicate building permit. Uh, the original was approved, but is missing apparently. It, oh. was, a, it was paid for on 623. Um, was, um, how did we even find out it was missing? I don't know. So yeah, how did we find out it was I missing? I can't find it. That's why but it's how did missing. You? But what Tasha time? came to pick it up. Oh, okay. All right. So that's approved in June, and they're just picking it up now. Hmm. <laughs> she came in on. Well, at least she paid her check. So she there paid, you go. She paid her check. It says the check was cashed on six twenty-three. And nobody can find it. Huh. Well, we could certainly give it another one, right? So they've already paid it. They must have had a delay when they were starting to work or so. Yeah. Do we want to date it back in June? Or no, we'll date it today. Yeah. Okay. You can just say to replace missing. Yeah. That, that would be yeah. well, we'll do it that way. Now, what's her street address? Yeah, 66 General John. What's it, $65? Yeah. Uh, $75. $75. So the thing about the backhoe, and Russ using the backhoe. Oh, yes. Um, so Russ is using the backhoe to pack down the, con the demo cans. That we need to do. That we need to do. So there's no so, one here to do it. Yeah, so, so exactly. We have no options. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. My argument was, well, i, I got to have somebody do it. Yeah. All right, I just. And I, I'm going to trust Russ way before I trust me. It's been a while. <laughs> The, uh, okay. the next one we have is 2017-099, 10 Highland Avenue. They are replacing existing roof shingles, replacing drip edge, and applying ice and water shields, and reflashing the chimney and skylights. Mr. Clark has reviewed it, it's a $75 fee. Um, uh, the um, junkyard on Summers Road. Mm -hmm. Yes, we got an email later in the day. Mm -hmm. So, so Tom, I assume we we all got that. So right, Tom right. was suggesting that we sort of give him like the, a month, thirty mm -hmm. days, something like that, to prove that he's met the requirements of the DESO. Yes. Mm -hmm. So and it, and he said and meeting the conditions of our of our, of our yes yeah, so let, let let's actually let me bring this up. Mm -hmm. 
Today's remains is the same, an expired town permit and a list of unaddressed EDS issues. I believe the next course of action should be a written notice from the board informing uh, the owner that he has 30 days to bring the property and business into compliance with local and state regulations and his failure to do so will result in the town issuing a cease and desist. I could draft a letter with the board's approval if you'd like. However, please remember we will have to proceed with the knowledge that legal assistance will be necessary if we have to do the cease and desist. So, board, what do you think? Yeah, he needs to come into compliance. Yeah. I mean, so we have Tom issue that letter. Okay, yeah, I will let him know. Okay. Just ignore that. The back of the junkyard abuts the uh, it's a uh, conservation. Yes. Yep. Understood. And Literally, the fence is right there, and there are there are vehicles and things piled. You can see them through the. Yeah, I remember the last time the I walked, which was already maybe a year and a half. But it was. So you, know, you don't know what's in I there. I don't know what's back there. I mean, I just know it's part of the lattice part. It's broken. Yeah, it's so you can yeah, kind of see. Sort of, kind of. Yeah. I mean, uh, All right, we will have Tom. Uh, we'll have to sign it and come to the board. Okay. Yeah, this is a list of. That's how he's been doing. And you're going to add the sidewalk at some point to the sidewalk. Yeah, I think I'll just print off the email. Um, Perfect. I'll, I'll let Mona like know. I like the name. Cut off the name. Yeah. I just added to the I list. respond to her. Mm -hmm. um, board, of course. Uh, this is the invoice for shipyard um, for the dumping that they had to do while a truck was not being worked on. Yes. Um, Lamprey offered to, because Northwood wanted them to be reimbursed because they had to go through the same thing. But shipyard charged us less than what Lamper charged us. <laughs> so our option is to just pay this bill and be done with it, or Lamper reimburses us, but then they charge us a regular fee. I don't think that had to. So I'm, I'm like, no, we this. weren't going to ask for it. Oh, then, all right. <laughs> so this, we Not needed fun. to have cans yeah. move while the transfer during the transfer station, the improvements. Right. And Lamper couldn't come. Right, I know I understand or, that. No, the truck was down. The truck mm -hmm. was and no one told us the truck was right. down. Oh, Robert, I thought he just Robert couldn't was on home. vacation. Well, that was another issue. Robert was on vacation, who was usually the dispatch. We expected the trucks to be there on Tuesday. It was during our. Yeah, this when we were having to move things opening. around. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so to get ready for opening. All that I understand, but I'm, I'm, I'm not keeping up with the. Why, would they, what why would they charge us again? If just well, pay shipyard for came, so that's shipyard's yeah. invoice to us. Yes, I get right. that. Okay, so now, so now they're saying telling yeah. us that we'll pay your shipyard because Northwood asked, and I wasn't going to ask because this was cheaper. So Northwood asked, and they got a cheaper rate. <laughs> so, so they wanted to be reimbursed. But Lamprey's argument was, well, we'll reimburse you, but we have to charge you the mileage. Um, yeah. Oh. For, for our truck that never showed up? Yes. Why? It doesn't make any sense. I said, so I wasn't... That's why I'm in trouble. I'm not following this, this line of reasoning. It doesn't seem to make sense. Okay, but so we're better off reason. just paying just that bill. Pay the bill then, yeah, yes, okay. and I wanted the board to see it because mm -hmm. if right now that's going to come out of the operating budget, that expense, but if there's money right. in right. the... We haven't gotten the final bill from Pike, oh. so we don't know... You know how close we are to that hundred ninety thousand. Okay. So, if if so there's we couldn't provide the service that we provide to you. We didn't tell you that we couldn't provide the service. We'll reimburse you because we had to go to someone else. But we're going to charge you. Yes. That makes no sense whatsoever. If they reimburse us at the higher rate. We'll take that. Right. Well, that's exactly right. That would make sense. To that <laughs> that's fine. Right. Right. Why would you then charge? Like if we were if we were charged right? more than what we would have normally been charged per mile. They would have given us the difference. Sure. But that makes sense to me. Right. This doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah. We should just pay uh, I think we just. So I said. Nuts. I said I think our board will just pay this, but yeah. I will double check with them. So I'm glad it's in the folder. It's in the folder, yeah. and it's so that I can morning. at least say right now it's coming out of the operating budget. We'll have to see if it's out of the point. Yeah. yeah. And that's Boyle Tanner. It's, I always like to have legal and, and engineering. Keep up with. Mm -hmm. I hate looking at these. Things. 
Yeah. It's not that bad. I know. I just don't like it. Here, it's the next one. I know. So that's my. There's stuff from this folder. Next one. Yes. What next one? Huh? You said there was a next one. Well, I, I don't. It's not we don't have it. Oh. It's, a ta <laughs> it's the task order. This, okay. this, is, this is the thing that's keeping me up at night. Okay. <laughs> okay. You have to sign up, but I can't promote it. Oh, okay. Well, you don't have to sign it. Let me rephrase that. Word. So, oh, is this your selectman? Do I get paid for those yes. uh, select, select word site, right? Yeah. I'm going to authorize this. Yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm not going to get third floor budget. I'm just going to wait. You can, you can, you can take a look at block. <coughs> okay. Very good. All right. Don't spend is... it all in one place. <laughs> you know, like Dunkin' Donuts or something. Like that. Oh, yeah. Real, it go, oh, it's a real joke. So good. Um, I'm a joke. The IRS paperwork was from last week um, that they received our... Oh, our tax exam. This was from last week. The bond. This yeah, was for the bond. This. This. Oh, and this was for uh, Kennebunk. So, the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank bonds, and then the Kennebunk Savings Bank. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just file after the same file. By the way, I asked Caroline to check with Kennebunk Savings Bank because. We haven't received any uh, interest statement, so I suppose I shouldn't go looking for trouble, but... No. <laughs> it shows up at our door. All right, all right, then I won't worry about it. Um, this is the equipment invoice. Um, I check? had them, yes, yeah. the, they, I had them double check, make sure everything was still here. Um, everything is still here along, um, like Spinny added a few things that have come so, since we created this. So where does that reside other than that piece of paper that you're holding in your hand? I think there's a version on the drive. And so we will have to update this. Because this was the paper updated. Is, if, I don't want to walk away with the only, because I, I yes. no, I'm not kidding. I'm not yes. good with paper. Yes. It's, it's that simple. You're not allowed to cut it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want it. So, so but so I'd this be happy to update. In my folder since Jeff handed it to me a year and a half ago. Okay. So I'd be happy to update. If there is something, I can update it. If there isn't, I can enter it. Right now on my phone. Can you it? Yeah, the phone is difficult. A real scan. You, I haven't you have uh, actually scanned it. All right. We'll put a PDF in and we'll email it to you if you want. All right. Is that what you did with the, That's what I did for, yeah, with the yeah. right to know? That one okay? Did it come? It was. It did. Yeah, I couldn't read it actually. That one was cold, but this is flat, so it's just... <laughs> I didn't iron it's that. Two one. Sides. Sorry. Right, I'll do what I promise. It's two sides. So. It's yeah. two sides to every document. <laughs> <laughs> late. Huh? It is. It is late. I don't care if it's just eight thirty. It's late. And this is um, the heavy equipment. And trucks are still there. <laughs> so, perfect. So that was nice of them. Um, this was. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about that again. So okay. I'll put this here. Okay. And this was from last week's scan into Avatar about. Uh, so. Sign something. So I sign here, but we signed it. Where is it? She didn't take it out. We signed these last week. So oh, these are veterans. Yeah. Okay. All right. So those are fine. Um, fencing. This is the proposal for the fencing. Um, I talked when I did talk to the transfer station agents. They do recommend the fencing. Um, as Jeff said, I guess people are coming in overnight. They found a barrel down there. Um, people had dumped trash. They're dumping hazard, hazardous waste as well. So they don't have to get rid of it themselves when no one is around. They're just walking under the Well, fencing's been a good idea from the beginning. It's always right. been a, a question of 
expense. So it's, so it's a budgetary item. It's that a budgetary item. You do want to, uh, you know, because of the the supposed cost, we we can roll it into the operating budget, right? Even though it's a it's capital, just not capital in the sense of the size of it. Uh, you know, I, I was already thinking ahead. There may be nothing left in the transfer station improvement warrant article, right? It, we I, we don't know what the last pike bill is, but if there is any money left, it seems to me we have two uh, items that could fill in that gap. One, the for the uh, little house for transfer station tenants and dispense, and you know it's a question of you know. Uh, I would say the safety of our tenants. I think the, the, the shed comes yeah. first. Yeah, that's what I think too. So let's see if there's money. Uh, you know, if they come up with some other ideas, you know, we can consider it. But you know, so so yeah, I agree. We, the, the fence is, you know, ever since Jeff has been talking about, it, it's been a good idea. It's, it's almost the, uh, it's probably about thirty-five hundred. So that doesn't rise to the level of CIP. Mm -hmm. no. So. Okay. We know if he, mm -hmm. did he get other bids? You know, we don't really know. I forget. Yeah, that, that might, um, might Garden be. Club's still in here. What is that about? Uh, the February thing that you could buy plants. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to put that on the website. Yeah, keep it in there. Speaking about Garden Club and trees. How did the trees thing go? Yes, so I met with Asplund mm -hmm. on Friday. He, he called the town because he got really concerned, and that was very kind. He got very concerned about the front of the community garden along Foundry, and he, he thought he might be making a significant difference, and it was worth checking in. Okay. So we called Caroline. Caroline said, the town has approved it, but please call the garden club. Well, so, so, so I sit wearing both hats. So he called me, and I arranged to have garden club board members there, and no one showed up, I was the only one there. And, but, you know, the swamp that he's going to take out is going to, you know, it's going to make a difference, but there's also vegetation that's within that in the garden club. So I think that there will still be some, you know, some element of privacy. I actually prefer it to be more open because I've been there in the evenings by myself. And, you know, I don't know who's going to be coming up from that trail all of a sudden, and I'm sort of there all by myself. Yeah. Uh, so I wouldn't mind it to be a little more open, but you know, the garden club can always, you know, with their fundraising, decide to buy some shrubbery or something if they want on the garden side. Right. Yeah. So, so he, and he was going to be doing that, I think, he's probably starting this week. He's worked, you worked the transfer station? Yes. Jesse Doe, did you guys, I didn't know oh, yeah, you been. really busy today. So I haven't gone with yeah, so, yeah. So, so that's um, part of Jesse Doe, though, he can't do yet by um, the well company there. Um, well, there's some, what was the story there? The them, but, Atlantic. Yeah, no. Clearwater. Clearwater, clear water, thank yeah. That's right. um, thank you. Oh, because one of the trees was part of the planning. Yes, yeah, that's it. Right. Whenever they, it was before me, but whenever they got their approval, the site review part of it was planting trees there. But now it, it's interfering, or aspirin leaves it one So what is the status? What's the next step? Uh, what has to board has to um, look at it? give the approval to cut them. Okay, uh, is it on the agenda? Or not, on, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. On Tuesday, next All right, week. but clearly aspirin is here, and yeah. they're working on the plan that we had approved, yeah. so. Is that it? I was it, everything else is old stuff. So. Okay, so, so we have one, we, we want to, Go into non-public for some personnel related items. Yep. So that will be the last thing on the agenda. So I'll we'll just do community input now and then do that. Does that work for everybody? Sure. All right. Any community input? I just got a quick question. Across from the highway, they're cutting down trees. Who's doing that? Yeah, that's what she was just talking about. No, I couldn't. Ask Blunt. Okay. But it's there's the, I thought that was on the other it's side. It's Eversource that has contracted them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's Eversource that's what I was that hoping. came to us. And, um, but, yes, it's asked they've, Yeah, they've cle cleared quite a swath there. Yeah, they're going to clear quite a swath in Foundry Street. So, I mean, he said, he, and he gave me the rationale, you know, when you put things that are under under the lines, they just they just want to keep that open as much as mm -hmm. possible. So, you know, you know we... Oh, we, nice we, storm, so appreciate we, it. it yeah, that's exactly Not tearing it. down the line. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, 
Okay, anything else? All right, then I will entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Roll call, Michael? Yes. Jody? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. I'll give you the follow-up sounding.